Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present at the Open Source Summit. My name is Inhyuk Zhang, and I am the presenter of the Zero Configuration Runtime Software Component Detection Session. I have researched in network and system security for over 10 years. I have recently been interested in technologies for improving cloud and container security. And I am currently studying security monitoring using eBPF. After hearing about the Low4j vulnerability in December last year, I thought that by using eBPF, I might be able to detect if Low4j is running on a system. Today, I'm going to present the early results of realizing this idea. Here's what we are trying to figure out in this presentation. First, learn how to check that the software of interest is running on your Linux system. Such software could include low for share, spring for share, etc. Check the feasibility of detecting runtime software component with eBPF. Try to detect the name and version of the software of interest running in the container through the implemented program using eBPF. Before implementing with eBPF, let's see what methods can be used to detect software components. The first thing that comes to mind in a low4j instance is that the low4j scanner. Among them, a file scanner is one of the most reliable ways to determine if certain software is present on your system. However, it takes a lot of time and effort to scan the entire file system. Scanning a live system sometimes requires a slow scan because resource usage must be limited. Also, it is not known whether the software present on the system is actually running. Next comes the software configuration analysis and SBAM generation tools. They usually check the software composition before its actual execution. Specifically, pre-deployment analysis is performed in the CI-CD pipeline. This is a great way to inspect software that is distributed with a well-configured DevOps system. However, some software may run without going through this process. You can take advantage of the powerful features of application tracing. As it analyzes the running program, it reflects the state of the actual running system. These usually require prior settings, such as running options. Now let's talk about runtime software component detection using eBPF. eBPF allows code to be injected and executed at certain points in the corner, such as system calls or corner functions are executed. So the first things that come to mind for monitoring job execution or system calls and functions that load jar files. Since jar execution is accompanied by the process of opening and reading files, when the Java process reads them, relevant information can be obtained from the kernel. At first, I thought that it was possible to get the file name just by tracking the file open so that I could get information about the software being used, but that was not enough. I needed a way to further analyze jars being run. Looking at the idea sketch I wrote for the first time in December of last year, I thought that when the read function returns, it can be analyzed by checking the file descriptor, buffer pointer, and read size. If you look at the memo written a few days later, you can see that the data analyzed according to the past result is stored in the eBPF map and the data to be transferred to the user space is sketched. 
This was sketched after checking the structure of the jar file. Let's look at the structure of the jar file then. A jar file is a Java archive and it is a format that distributes Java class files, metadata, and related resources in one file. Since jar files are compressed in zip format, you must first be able to parse the zip file format. Analyzing a zip file in the kernel may seem absurd at first glance, but you can get information by observing the analysis process rather than directly analyzing it with eBPF. Although eBPF does not directly read and parse the data, analyzing the data read by the application for parsing allows us to obtain information at the kernel. There are three main types of data in the C file format, end of central directory record, central directory, and local file header. As can be seen in the figure, a local file header exists for each file entry, and the central directory is located at the back of the C file. The ECDR is located at the end of the C file and contains the starting location and size of central directory. So you can read the ECDR and then read the central directory. As shown in the figure, ECDR starts with the four byte signature and includes information such as the number of entries in the Z file, the offset of the central directory, and the size of the central directory. After reading the ECDR, it starts reading the CDR. It contains the central directory header and file name for each file entry. In central directory header, you can get the local file header's starting position where each file entry starts. As shown in the figure, the header of the CDR also starts with a four byte signature and contains detailed information about each file entry, including the file name. A local file header is a header that is prefixed to actual file data and includes file size, file data size, and compression information. The local file header is followed by the actual file data. As shown in the figure, it starts with a four byte signature and contains less information than the central directory header. If you compose a program to process based on the jar file structure, you can divide it into the main part that directly traces cases read and subcomponents that processes each header, file name, and payload. At this time, subprograms are written with eBPF takeoffs because eBPF programs have limitations on stack size and the number of instructions. Separate programs handle complex set tasks. A takeoff is one of the methods provided by eBPF, and unlike a normal function, it does not return to the calling location. The following figure is a sketch of the data to be sent to the user space based on the results obtained by tracing jar file parsing in the kernel and the results to be analyzed and extracted from user space. Process information, jar file information, extracted payload information, manifest information, etc. are expressed. Suddenly, manifest appears here. A manifest MF contains metadata about a jar file. This includes package related information, main class information for execution, etc., and appears in a specified location. We read the package information from a manifest file to start extracting component information. Of course, there are jar files without package information in the manifest MF. So you need 
to use other information additionally, but reading this file and extracting package information is taught. The following are the contents of manifest MF in Low4j core. You can see the items where you can check the title and version. We prefer to use a specification version, which has a format form. Based on what we've talked about so far, here's a summary of the trial runtimes software component detection method. We detect software component in versions by tracing kernel functions called when jar files are executed. When a jar is executed on the system, the header and payload are read according to the structure of the jar file. When reading the header, find the offset of the manifest MF file containing information about the jar. When the payload is read, the payload of the metadata is extracted and delivered to the user space. Inflate the payload delivered to the user space and extract the title and version information. Here's a sketch of this stuff. When Java reads a jar file from the file system and performs parsing, often parsing data through tracing using eBPF. Reading the previous sketch looks like this. After acquiring parsing data by tracking the reading of end of central directory record, central directory records, local file headers, and payloads, information for analysis is stored in an internal map, and PuffPuffer or RingBuffer is used to send information to the user program. At this time, the detected payload of manifest MF is delivered in a compressed state. The user program decompresses the compressed manifest MF and analyzes the package information contained in the jar. In the implementation of EPPF program, each header of the jar is obtained using the following structures. The data structure passed to the user program is as follows. There is a structure that delivers information about process and jar files to the user space, and a structure that delivers the extracted payload. Payloads are transmitted iteratively in chunks based on their size. The main parts handled by the K return proof to keep track of cases read are invokes a tail call to process according to the four byte signature. At this time, the program that processes the central directory reads all entries repeatedly. If the central directory size is large, the central directory data cannot be read in one read and is truncated. In this case, a tail call program that recovers the truncated portion is called. It also calls the tail call program that sends the file name and payload to the user program according to the condition. Offset information internally stored in the map is used for jar parsing. In the user space program, we set the program array for tail calls like this. We use compress flate to inflate the deflated compressed payload without a header. Using the implemented result, we search for components related to low for share and spring for share from public images of Docker Hub. One experiment was performed by pulling 2,500 public images with the default tag expected to be the latest. For reference, this experiment was conducted in May 2022. We will mainly look for Apache Low4j core versions below 2.16, where the Low4Share vulnerability exists. 
we look for a spring core 5.3 to 5.3.17 or 5.2.0 to 5.2.19 and all your versions. If this version is used in conjunction with JDK 9 or later, it may be vulnerable. So I will mainly look for that version. The runtime software component detection tool implemented with eBPF. The results shown in the figure below can be obtained. Process page information, container information, detected jar file information, detected component title, component version, etc. are displayed. I searched log4j core and found that some images contain lower versions of log4j. Recent images are automatically scanned by Docker Hub to deal with log4j shell. I will talk about the analysis of this result later on and how it happened. Five point three point ten, five point three point eleven, five point three point fourteen, and five point two point five packages related to Spring for Share were also found. Since it was a relatively recent vulnerability at the time of the search, it seems that it has not been patched yet. One case where a lower version of Log4j was detected was when Log4j 2.16.0 was included. I knew that the Log4j version without the vulnerability was from 2.17.1. But there was low for shell CVE not detected batch on this image, which was strange. This happens because the batch means that there is no log for shell, which is 44228. Not that there are no low for J related vulnerabilities. In the case of this image, it is displayed as not detected, even though low for J core. 2.16.0 was included. 2.16.0 is a repatched version because 2.15, which was patched immediately after 44228 was released, was incomplete. This version has additional vulnerabilities such as 45105 and 44832 but not the original row for shell. The next thing is about the latest tag. For one image using a very low version of log4j, the image with the latest tag was pushed seven months ago, but there was a main image pushed three days ago. This repository simply does not tag the latest version as latest but another one. If you Google it, there are stories about the latest tag from 2015. Latest is just a tag. It may not be up to date unless the image publisher sets it as a tag. However, since it is used as the default tag for Docker pool, it is still misleading from the user's point of view. It seems like you should always check tags to avoid unintentionally using a vulnerable version of an image. Another case is for deprecated projects. This image with over 10 million pools is a project that ended in December 2021. Fortunately, the last version responded to low for share by removing the JNDI lookup classes, but various vulnerabilities still exist. This concludes the presentation on the detection of runtime software component using eBPF. Thank you for your attention.